My name is Andrew Birch. I am the property manager at the Mass Audubon Boston Nature Center. I'm going to give you a, green, uh, a tour of the green building here, the George Robert White Environmental Conservation Center. The city of Boston uh, continues to use this as an example of what green design can be. Um, they have put together councils where local architects and engineers come out to really see a functioning green building. The first thing people notice when they come in uh, is the solar parking lot lights. These are completely off-grid. The sun hits the solar photovoltaics, it charges batteries inside, uh, completely contained in that light. We're really taking advantage of the sunlight by positioning a bunch of the building to the south. You'll notice the clear story windows uh, right above the trellis there. That is really allowing us to take advantage of the passive solar heat and the light. So if you position your building to the south, you know, that's great during the winter because you're going to stay nice and warm and get lots of light. But during the summer, you know, oh my god, it's going to get really hot. So you can do something really simple, like the trellis. That trellis has grapevines growing on it. The grapevines during the summer have just very thick dense foliage and uh, it provides shade during the summer and then during the winter it falls off and we get to take advantage of the heat. Very simple, very cost-effective, um, and very natural. Plus, you get some really great grapes in September. We have three solar hot water panels there. There are simple little uh, pipes running through filled with glycol. And the sun heats those pipes up. The glycol goes down to our hot water heater and uh, there's a heat exchanger there where basically the sun is preheating all of our hot water. Next solar technology is the solar photovoltaic shingles. Most people come in and they hear we've got solar power on the building, but they don't see it, you know? Uh, they don't come out here and they don't see the big square panels that they're so used to. Uh, that's because these shingles look exactly like uh, slate, and that's what they're designed to do, is to look like slate. Uh, you'll notice they're a little bit glossier, and they produce about two and a half kilowatts of energy. As you saw outside, those shiny shingles up on the top of the tower, uh, this is this is what makes them shiny. These, this is the solar photovoltaic portion. Uh, these overlap, connect to each other, and then are run back down uh, into our building where the energy is converted to usable energy. The first thing a lot of people notice are these giant timbers that we have. No old growth forests were cut down for this building. Uh, this is a material called parallel strand timbers, which is basically taking wood chips and sawdust uh, uh, produced in standard milling processes and compressed together in a composite. It's a great way to incorporate large uh, timbers into your design without having to cut down old growth forests. Trying to stay away from the plastics, the things that are more difficult to recycle and reuse. Uh, the idea being that at the end of the life of this building, either everything is, everything in the building is going to be either recycled or reused. The slate on the inlay is uh, quarried right in Quincy, Massachusetts, which is right down the road. Some people might have thought linoleum went out of style in the 70s, but it's coming back uh, for good reason. Not only is it easy to take care of and really beautiful, it's also uh, just about completely, I believe, completely organic. Uh, it is, you know, cedar shavings and linseed oil, and you take the wax off that uh, linoleum tile, you can throw the tile on your compost pile. Uh, another uh, green feature of this building are the lack of material right here on our floor. This is just a standard concrete floor, uh, but we've applied a material called skookum, which gives it the texture and pigment. And it's, it's a great way to save on, you know, not using as much material to build your building. Uh, we use low off-gas paint uh, in the building, uh, also known as hospital paint or low VOC paint. Uh, it's really remarkable stuff. I personally was painting a room about a year ago and had gotten about halfway through the room and I looked around and I didn't have a single door or window open. I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. I didn't, couldn't smell it at all. Whenever you are designing a building and considering the HVAC system and efficiency, the first thing you do is uh, look at um, the building envelope, keeping the building tight. and. This building here is constructed with structural insulated panels. This is a SIP. As you can see, this is what is in the walls and the ceiling. Uh, there is a couple of pieces of OSB. 
with compressed uh, with styrofoam pressed between the two. These come in four by eight sheets. These uh, are also a very cost effective uh, green solution uh, because of the reduction in labor costs. Uh, with standard uh, stud construction, there's a lot more labor involved. These can come pre-cut from the factory to incorporate your windows and doors. So literally the only thing that has to be done is the installation. Once you've kept the cold air out and the warm air in, it's good not to suffocate. It's good to get some fresh air. Uh, so we have a couple of very interesting technologies to ensure that that happens. One is called an energy recovery ventilator. It's a giant box with a wheel. And what happens is it sucks the cold, the cold fresh air from outside and mixes it with the preconditioned air, the warmed air, so you're getting the benefits of fresh air coming in, but it's already been warmed up by the air that's already in your building. That way you're not blasting your room with you know, freezing cold air or hot humid air in the summer. Welcome to the office space. This is where we all do our work. Uh, this is uh, a really nice space to work in. Um, you know, the low VOC paint we mentioned, you know, that's one reason it's nice. Uh, the, the carpeting is low VOC uh, as well. All of the uh, office furniture is recycled, low off gas stuff. Um, it's, it's a really nice, clean environment to work in. Uh, the light shelves, this is another one of those really simple, cost-effective uh, technologies. Uh, basically, the light shelves are designed to take the light that comes in from the clear story windows and to bounce it up into the onto the ceiling and give us a nice diffuse light. On a sunny day, this room is basically entirely lit by the the light coming in through those windows. These light sensors are picking up how much light is in the room. The more light in the room, the dimmer the lights are, the less energy we're burning. Many of the rooms, they have occupancy sensors. Um, motion sensors that come turn the lights on when you come into the room I mean you can get those at Home Depot it's so cheap it's so easy and if you're someone who is constantly coming home and saying oh I forgot to turn off the lights get an occupancy sensor because you won't forget to turn off the lights again they'll turn off by themselves this is interface carpets probably my favorite piece of the building because it is such a paradigm shift uh, and that is uh, for the longest time and still to a large extent currently, um, people go and they buy carpets. And you buy a carpet and you put it down, and then five years later your carpet wears a little hole right where that chair always rubs. And what are you going to do? You're going to replace that whole carpet. But what we do is we are basically um, renting, leasing this, these squares of carpeting. Uh, these squares of carpeting are put down into the um, floor, they're low VOC carpet, they are uh, recycled material carpet, and as these pieces wear out under someone's desk um, in a high traffic area, we can pull out the squares and ship them back to the company where they will uh, recycle them into more carpeting and then we get a piece back that fits in and it's a service and we don't have to pull up the entire carpeting. Wastewater is an issue, especially when you're dealing with, uh, stormwater I should say is an issue, especially when you're dealing with a building this size. And so we have dealt with ours on the ground. Uh, basically you won't find gutters on the building, instead there are perforated pipes under, submerged around the entire building. The water collects in those pipes and then leads to a series of drainage ponds. Uh, we have uh, a cattail pond right out back. If that fills up, we have a second drainage pond, again filled with cattails. Through even a hundred year storm here, we are going to add no additional water to the Boston water and sewer system. The stormwater systems are not designed uh, to take all of the water that comes off of the street and the buildings and treat it. Uh, basically, during a big rain, that's a huge deluge of water and the treatment plants can't handle that much water. So as the water levels rise in the sewers, they're rechanneled to go directly into our bodies of water. There's a lot of minerals, a lot of salt, a lot of stuff off of the roads that aren't good to end up there. So the more and more that people can deal with their own you know, water runoff, the better it'll be. 